Yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for taking the time to watch our Zoom webinar on our open enrollment process this year for our medical, dental, vision, and health benefits from the district. Uh, my name is Carol Mahesi, and I am the director of HR. And with me today is Jean Daggs, and she is our um, HR specialist. I'm sure many of you have met her. Um, the purpose of today's webinar is to provide uh, you all with an overview of our various uh, health benefit options for this year, um, hopefully answer some of your frequently asked questions, um, and then talk to you about what our open enrollment process is going to look like for this year. Um, so we'll get started, and I hope that you find this helpful and informative. The first thing we wanted to discuss is who is eligible for our uh, health benefits. Um, and eligibility is really based on your full-time status and the number of hours you work per week. Um, so in our district, any employee um, that works 30 hours or more per week um, is eligible to enroll in our health benefits. Um, you're also eligible uh, to enroll your dependents, um, including your legal spouse, domestic partner, um, a child that you may have um, at home who is under age 16, um, unmarried child of any age um, who may be medically uh, dependent upon you. Um, another question we often get is when can you enroll in our benefits? There are three times throughout the year that you can enroll in our benefits. The first one is when you are hired. Um, you have the opportunity to open and enroll in our benefits um, as part of your hiring process. Uh, the second time is during our annual open enrollment period, which is what we are now entering that we'll be talking about today. Um, and then the third time is if you experience a qualifying life event. Um, and this is often something like a family status change, um, which can include getting married, divorced, um, having a child, um, a death in the family, um, or potentially a change in work status that may impact uh, your benefits. Um, if you don't enroll at one of these times, then you do have to wait for our annual open enrollment period. Um, before we get started talking about our various uh, benefits options, we wanted to just uh, go over a couple of key terms that you'll see uh, throughout our benefits guide. Um, and hopefully this will be helpful in understanding um, the differences between the three uh, healthcare plan options that we do offer. Um, the first uh, term that we wanted to go over is copayment, um, and that is just a flat fee that you pay for certain medical services. This is probably the one that we're all most familiar with, which is um, what we pay when we go to the doctor's office um, uh, for a regular visit. Um, often we'll have, you know, uh, a $40 copay or something that we need to pay at that time. Um, in those cases, the insurance um, and the district pick up the rest of the costs. Uh, the second term is deductible, um, and that relates to the amount uh, that you would need to pay out of pocket each calendar year before the plan begins paying benefits for certain types of services. Um, this is most often applicable in the case of more expensive types of services like hospitalizations. The third term is coinsurance, um, and that really refers to the percentage of the medical bill or charges that you would pay um, for certain types of services. Again, for example, hospitalizations after the deductible has been met and until you reach maximum out-of-pocket limits. Um, so for example, for a hospitalization, um, if your deductible was $4,000, you would pay the first $4,000. Um, and then after that, um, the insurance would pay 80% of the costs um, up until you reach the maximum out of pocket. Um, and then they would pay 100% of the costs. Um, the maximum out of pocket is the maximum amount that you will pay during a calendar year um, for any of these benefits. Um, so we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, finally, the health savings account um, and also our flexible savings account. These are um, tax deferred uh, savings accounts that you can use to pay for um, qualifying medical expenses. Um, and there's a lot more information about those options. If those would apply to you, we're happy to answer more questions about those. Um, before we talk about benefits, one of the key things that, that you'll notice on the next slide when we get into this is that there is a difference um, between uh, seeking services in-network from our in-network providers and seeking services from our out-of-network providers. Um, and that difference applies to both the, the deductible, uh, the maximum amount of pocket, and also um, the co-insurance amount um, that you would pay. So it's really important to pay attention to that um, as we look at the different plan options because that is one of the differentiators. Um, and differences, and it's also uh, something um, to be mindful of when you're selecting a provider uh, for a particular service. So this is uh, an overview slide of the three medical plans that we're offering this year. These are the same medical plans that we offered last year for those of you that, that um, had insurance with us last year. Um, and there's significant amount of detail about these plans in our health benefits guide 
which is posted on our website under the HR page at the very top. There's a button that says Health Benefits Guide Updated. Um, and that has a lot of information about each of these plans. But for the purposes of today's webinar, we just wanted to share with you some high level information that hopefully will be helpful in helping you understand the differences between the plans um, as you think about making your choices. And again, I would really encourage everyone to also read the, the health benefits guide and to potentially uh, schedule an appointment with one of us uh, if you have additional questions um, after you've read that guide. Um, so the first thing that we'll talk about is the in-network benefits for each of these plans. So you'll remember I said earlier that um, our benefits are better if you're in-network um, in terms of what's covered uh, and, the, and the amount of uh, out-of-pocket expenses that, that you might um, incur. So uh, in any given year, um, this is the, the deductible uh, amount for an individual and the deductible amount for a family for each of the plans. So the first amount would apply to, um, if you have an employee-only policy, that would be your deductible for any calendar year. Um, and the second amount following the, um, the slash would be the family deductible if you have a family plan um, for uh, each of these plans. So as you can see, uh, for plan A, um, we refer to plan A as our high deductible uh, plan. Um, and so that means that in any uh, calendar year, um, for an employee-only policy, your deductible for plan A would be $4,000. Um, so you would need to um, meet that deductible before um, your full insurance would kick in, and $8,000 for a family. For plan B, which is what most of our um, employees have, have selected, uh, the employee deductible is $2,000, um, and the family deductible is $4,000. Um, and then for plan C, the employee deductible is $1,000, and the family deductible is $2,000. Um, and we'll talk a little bit uh, in the next slide about the differences between these. Um, and one of the big differences is how much uh, the uh, employee pays towards each of these has a significant, um, per month, has a significant influence on how much these deductibles are. Um, the next um, line is maximum out of pocket. Um, and so, as you remember on the previous slide, um, maximum out of pocket is the difference between um, once you've met your deductible, um, and you move into uh, coinsurance uh, between your max, your annual deductible and your maximum out of pocket, that's that amount. So um, for plan A, it's the same. Uh, for plan B, your maximum out of pocket per year would be $4,000 uh, for an employee only policy and $8,000 for a family policy. And for plan C, it would be $35,000 maximum out of pocket for an employee only and $7,000 for, um, for a family. Um, so the other thing we talked about earlier is coinsurance, and that is uh, what is the amount that you would be responsible for um, during that time period between meeting your deductible and hitting your maximum out of pocket. So just to give an example that might help make this um, seem a little more real, is let's say that you um, had a situation where you needed to be hospitalized for something, um, maybe a surgery, and you have an employee-only plan on plan B. Um, so you would pay the first $2,000 of the hospital bill, um, and that would then mean that you had met your deductible. Once you've met your deductible, then you would only pay 20% of the following hospital bills, and the insurance would pay 80% until you hit your maximum out of pocket, which is $4,000. At that point, the insurance would pay the remaining amount. So if that makes any sense, you would pay all of the initial hospital bills up to $2,000, then you would pay 20% of any additional hospital bills up to $4,000, which is your maximum out of pocket. And at that point, the insurance would pay the rest. So I know it can be kind of confusing to think about the difference between deductible and maximum out of pocket and coinsurance, but hopefully that example kind of helps explain um, how those things relate to each other. Um, so that's for in-network. For out-of-network, if you were to see a specialist or, or go to a facility that's out of our network, the same principles apply in terms of deductible, maximum out of pocket, and coinsurance but you'll see that the amounts are, are, are greater. Um, so the uh, individual deductible um, for employee-only plans is much higher um, for all of these, plan A, B, and C. Um, and the, similarly, the same thing with the um, family deductible um, for each year, it, for each plan is also much higher. Same thing with the maximum out of pocket. And then you see that the co-insurance is 30%. Um, so definitely, um, uh, visiting providers in network is definitely a better deal both for uh, yourself as an employee and your family um, that may be covered and also for the district and that's because our insurance company has negotiated rates with our in-network providers. 
Um, so that was the an overall structure of our three plans. This uh, next slide shows you what the employee contributions are for each of our three plans, um, for an employee-only policy, um, all the way up to an employee plus family policy. So for plan A, um, there is no cost per month to um, the employee. However, part of the reason for that is because it is a high deductible plan. So as you remember on the previous slide, that means that the employee who has this plan would be responsible for 100% of the expenses associated to this plan until you meet your, um, your deductible. So um, there's some trade-offs there and that's something if you're considering it, I would strongly encourage you to set up an appointment with us and talk through what that would mean for your individual situation. Um, and we're happy to talk to you about that. Um, and similarly, the uh, costs for uh, the um, uh, family, various family plans are also less, but again, the deductibles for those plans are higher and the maximum out of pocket for those plans are higher. So that's plan A, um, our high deductible health savings account plan. Um, and if you do select this plan, um, the reason why it says HSA here is that this is a plan that's set up to be uh, managed in, um, with an HSA so that you can put money into savings so that you can be prepared to pay those deductibles and those maximum out of, of pocket costs. Plan B, um, uh, again, is our most popular plan with employees and the employee only cost per month uh, is $21 for this year. Um, and then you can see the corresponding uh, family plans, um, the cost of the family plans. Um, and that um, has, again, kind of a, a middle of the road deductible and um, maximum out of pocket. And then plan C, um, has the lowest deductible and the lowest out of pocket, but it also has the highest per month cost for the employee and for the family. So you can start to see that those two things are related, that the, the more you pay out of pocket each month for the plan, for the premium, then the lower your deductibles and your maximum out of pocket will be. The less you pay per month, then the higher your um, deductibles and maximum out of pocket are gonna be. So that's how those plans are structured. Um, one of the things that I should say about our health insurance plan is that these costs, um, both what the district is paying and what employees are paying, um, are based on actual uh, claims. On a year-to-year -year basis, the district is paying out. Um, and so, um, and then the, a very uh, minor management fees that we're paying to our management company to manage the plan. Um, so we really are working always on ways to um, reduce costs as much as possible to keep them in line with what our actual claims are. Um, so that's a little bit of an overview of the plan structure um, and the employee costs. So I wanna talk a little bit more now about the uh, contributions that the district makes. Um, one of the things that uh, we have been committed to from the beginning is providing uh, good health insurance and good benefits to our employees um, as a way to really show our appreciation um, uh, to all of you and to um, um, hopefully promote your health and, and your sense of security around that and having good benefits. So. Uh, this upcoming year, the district um, anticipates spending about $2.6 million on our health plan. Um, and that uh, equals about a little over $8,000 per employee um, for the district portion of the health care plan cost. Um, so that, that uh, amounts to about $670 per month that the district would pay um, per employee for, for the health care uh, plan cost. And um, you can see here a comparison of what that looks like compared to how much our other surrounding districts are paying towards their employee um, healthcare costs. Um, so we are uh, pleased to be uh, one of the highest contributing um, districts in the area in terms of how much we are contributing to our employees' healthcare plans. Um, one of the things that we also wanted to talk about is just uh, a total annual benefits package. Um, this information is on your paycheck uh, every month. Um, at the bottom, you can see the various uh, contributions that the district is making um, towards uh, not only your salary, obviously, but also other benefits. So, um, so in addition to your salary, um, the district is paying almost 21% on top of your salary towards PARA um, in your retirement every year. Uh, as I mentioned, the district is paying a little over $8,000 every year towards medical benefits. Um, on average, the district pays uh, $81 um, uh, towards employee life insurance, um, which is offered at no cost to employees. Um, and then uh, we have uh, some other kind of um, additional benefits that we provide at no cost to the employee, such as our telehealth benefit, which is new this year, and our employee assistance mm -hmm. program. Um, and we pay roughly $100 um, a year per employee towards those benefits. 
So together, this, this adds up to what we consider to be your total benefits package in terms of the total amount of money that the district is investing in each employee um, for their salary and benefits. I um, want to talk briefly about dental and vision. We are also pleased to offer dental and vision um, optional coverage to employees if they would like this, and you can see the costs here. Um, we do have a fair amount of employees that are taking advantage of, of these two benefits, um, and this is something that you can also sign up for or continue uh, during open enrollment. And then finally, I mentioned that we are also offering uh, life insurance at no cost to the employee. So this is another um, good benefit that we're pleased to offer. And we also offer um, accidental death and dismemberment as part of this. And you can see here um, what those uh, um, coverage amounts are and, and the benefits uh, both for employees and then um, for spouse and children. Um, just wanted to briefly mention health savings accounts and, and flexible savings accounts. Um, these are two options that are available um, and, and recommended that you think about if you uh, choose option A for health uh, benefits, which we mentioned um, is a high uh, deductible, uh, high maximum out of pocket. So it's, it's set up to be used in, in conjunction with a health savings account. So a health savings account um, would allow employees who enroll in option A uh, to be able to set aside pre-tax um, money from their check uh, per year that can then be used towards medical expenses. So you can see here the defined um, maximum contributions for employee only or employee um, plus family. Um, and that money would again go into your health savings account pre-tax, which is a benefit to you because it reduces your taxable income. And then it's available for you to um, use to put towards um, uh, health, uh, eligible health expenses. Mm -hmm. If you're interested in this option or you're interested in selecting Plan A, would strongly encourage you again to set up an appointment to talk to us um, and to read through some additional information that we'll be sending you. Um, the flexible spending account, um, as it says, is a little bit more flexible. So it's not just tied to the um, Plan A option, it's really tied to um, a variety of out of pocket medical, dental, vision um, expenses that you might have, including dependent care expenses um, when you think about those um, uh, dependent care plans that we talked about earlier. This is similar in that you have the opportunity to put money into an account pre-tax, so it lowers your overall um, taxable income, um, and that allows you then to spend those dollars towards eligible medical expenses. Um, again, this is an, uh, an option that can be really beneficial for a lot of people, but it is a little bit complicated. So if you're interested in exploring this, um, and you, especially if you have uh, anticipate having dependent care policy and expenses, this might be something worth looking at. Um, I would encourage you to make an appointment to talk to us um, and to read through additional materials that we'll be sending. Um, so open enrollment for this year. Open enrollment for this year is going to be a little bit different. We are going to be starting the process focused only on our district open enrollment for health, dental, and vision and life insurance. And um, that is going to be taking place um, October 13th uh, with, through the October 23rd. Um, and this year, all employees must submit a benefit enrollment form, even if there's no changes, um, by October 23rd. And the benefit form that you'll receive um, in your email, and it will also be available on our website, um, if there's no changes, there's a box at the top that you can just put your name and information on there and just check the no changes box, and that's fine. That's all we need to know. But if you do want to make changes, either to the type of benefits that you are selecting, um, maybe you want to add or drop a vision or dental, or maybe you want to change uh, your plan option, or if you want to add or drop dependents, um, then we would ask that you fill out the whole form and turn that in by October 23rd. Mm -hmm. um, so we are going to be available for those appointments that I mentioned. So for people that have additional questions um, or want to have an individualized appointment, um, these are the times that we will be available at each of the schools. Um, and we are going to ask that you sign up for an available time with uh, your building secretary um, so that we know uh, when to expect you. Um, during these times. And then we will have uh, times at the district central offices on October 22nd and 23rd for um, employees associated to our operational departments and also some limited makeup times um, if you weren't able to attend one of the times that we are available at the school. Um, all employees will need to turn in the form by October 23rd, but all employees do not need to meet with us. So this is available if this would be helpful to you. We would love to meet with you and answer your questions, but you don't have to meet with us. Um, what, what we do need back from you is your uh, benefit enrollment form by October 23rd. 
So hopefully that helps give you a little brief overview of our benefits. Um, as I said, again, we have our full health benefits guide, which explains each of these plans and each of these options in detail. That is available, again, on the district website, under the departments, under the HR page. At the very top, there is a button that says updated benefits guide, and you can click on that. And our um, enrollment form will also be available on the website. So in addition, that will be sent out to you through um, your uh, building secretaries or your department secretaries, um, so you will have that information as well. Um, if you have questions, you know, we strongly encourage you to set up an appointment with Jean or myself uh, using that sign-in sheet. Um, but you can also always call uh, Jean directly or email her. Um, we appreciate your time and we really look forward to, um, to having a great open enrollment session and um, continuing um, to provide the benefits that we've been able to provide. Thank you again and um, we will see you over the next two weeks for open enrollment. Can we just add one little thing? Yes. I just wanted to let them know if they don't want to make any changes or they already know what options they want to pick to send their EBMS form to Judy Wilkinson. So if they don't want to meet with us and don't feel a need to do it and just want to get that in right away, please email your form or send it through inner office mail to Judy and she will take care of it for you. Great. Thank you, Jean. Um, important to note. And that information will also be in the newsletter that's going out this week. So thank you, everyone. And we look forward to uh, seeing you, uh, many of you, over the next two weeks.